John Conrad's and uh, I was an Olympic gold medalist in the 1960 Rome Olympics for 1500 metres freestyle. I had a whole swag of world records as well. In fact, uh, I had more long course uh, male world records than anybody else until a young man called Ian Thorpe came along. Uh, he's only not even halfway through his career yet. Uh, he's broken more world records than I have, so I think that'll be a hard act to beat in the future. I'm also a great believer in nutritional supplements and uh, keeping myself fit and healthy. I'm 60 years old now, so it gets harder every year. And particularly glyconutrients glyco have been very, very useful to me and, and give me a fantastic feeling of wellness. Uh, after a lifetime in the corporate world, I'm back in the fitness business again. I'm the director of the Cook and Phillip Park Aquatic and Fitness Centre right in the heart of Sydney. And it uh, gives me a great deal of pleasure to see everybody coming here, getting fit, getting well, and kids in particular. We've got a lot of kids. We've got all, all, almost uh, 2,000 kids in our swim school. And it's great to see these youngsters coming up and, and growing up not only healthy, but also safe in the water. And some of them will come up to be good swimmers. Hopefully, an Ian Thorpe circa 2015 or so. John, thank you very much for inviting me here to Sydney, this absolutely fabulous area in Sydney Harbour. And I'm very pleased to be able to talk to you this morning and ask you a few questions of your experiences. Yeah, well, this is a particularly nice part of the world. And in fact, uh, underneath that bridge is the North Sydney Olympic Pool, where in the 50s and 60s, uh, the Australians set all their world records, including myself and my sister. And uh, in fact, it's the pool where more world records have been set than any other, uh, if you include yards, because of the LA Coliseum, I think if we just uh, talk metres, it probably has a, a few more world records set in it. I understand, and I know you have been a former Olympic swimming champion, and I understand that uh, you're still doing a fair bit of swimming recreationally and competitively. Yes, well, recreationally, uh, in the sense of just keeping toned, it's, it's a great sport. There's no wear and tear on the, on the limbs. Uh, and uh, I swim two, sometimes three times a week. Uh, not long, just 45 minutes or so. And competitively, not really until recently. I, uh, uh, there are a lot of uh, offshore beach swims here. They go mm -hmm. from about 1.5 to about 2.5 kilometers. And uh, for many years, I didn't compete. And, and simply saying, I, I was being falsely modest by saying, well, uh, with my background, I don't want to come in third or fourth or fifth. Uh, yeah. But the reality was that after about 20 minutes or after about one kilometer or so, I'd get cramps. I see. And then I, I started taking uh, nutritional supplements and glyconutrients, and uh, uh, I, I, I couldn't avoid a, an invitational swim down in Melbourne, which was three kilometers. And so I sort of figured, okay, well, it was along the beachfront, so I could get off any time without mm -hmm. having the dishonor of being rescued by a boat. <laughs> uh, so uh, I, I, I figured out all my plan is that after one kilometer I get off there, after 1.5 I get off there, and, and I went the whole way without any problem, not even a twinge. I used to get cramps in my calf muscles and in my feet, and uh, not a thing, so it's, uh, it's fantastic. So basically what you're telling me is these glyconutrients or these supplements you take have improved your performance, even on a recreational level and Absolutely. mild competitive level. At a mild competitive level, but, but more importantly, my own self-esteem. Because it ain't fun to be an Olympic gold medalist and say, well, I'm sorry guys, uh, I don't want to compete. You know, I've done too much of that sort of stuff. And, and I want to be there with the guys. Besides, that's not in your nature to come in second. <laughs> no, it's not. But it's funny uh, how um, I, I, I eat well. I, I do have one blessing, I haven't got too much weight on. I just happen to like good food, uh, what the doctors say is good food, and I don't like what the doctors say is bad food, except for sometimes a glass of wine too many. Uh, but why can't we get enough out of our normal diets? Well, that's a very, very good point, and we can't get all the nutrients we need out of our diets for a myriad of reasons. One is our agricultural practices now are not conducive to good nutrition. What I'm saying is that uh, for whatever reason, economics and otherwise, foods are picked before they've fully developed all their nutritional aspects. They are stored and carted sometimes thousands and thousands of miles, which takes days to many times up to a month or six weeks. And every week that food is in uh, storage, it loses, because of enzymatic action, it loses some of its nutrient uh, qualities and the nutrient that was in the plant in the first place. We also use many things like 
pesticides, we use artificial fertilizers, we use in some cases herbicides. Many, many aspects deplete the nutritional quality of our foods and increase the oxidative stress on your body. Now, everybody who exercises produces extra oxidative stress, they produce more nutritional byproducts, and it takes a lot of physiological effort to get rid of this. But the point is, the foods that we buy in our grocery stores now, even though they're the best possible that we can get, do not provide all the nutritional needs of a person's body. That's why uh, vine ripe and tomatoes are so expensive, is it? <laughs> well, that's part of it, yes, because they have to be picked fresh, they yeah. have to be transported quickly, yeah. and yeah, yeah, and vine ripened tomatoes have lycopene, which is one of the natural antioxidants, and they're absolutely beneficial to you. Well, we started taking uh, supplements in the form of vitamins, particularly. Uh, when I started training in the 50s, we, we used to take pretty big doses of vitamins, A, uh, B complex, uh, eventually a lot of B12. Mm -hmm. um, Vitamin C, of course, and uh, E, vitamin E. Uh, and uh, these are all good things to take. Mm. The glyconutrients... But we were working, like, like, we got up to six hours a day in the water. Absolutely. Uh, that's, uh, I mean, they, they, they went on in the 70s and 80s to do more still, but uh, they were doing more kilometres in the same number of hours. Uh, but we got up to about uh, 12 kilometres, about seven miles a day. Well, I couldn't even walk that far prior <laughs> to, to my starting an exercise program. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. What I was going to say, you know, we've always known that you need food for energy. Uh, a sports car needs high-octane food. I mean, <laughs> high-octane fuel. In our bodies, obviously, we don't run on petrol, but uh, we need high-octane food. And the only way to get this is through the nutritional supplements, because we know we need vitamins, minerals, and obviously, in days past, they used these supplements to help improve performance. We need fatty acids, but now the new area of research is that we need these monosaccharides and glyconutrients. They are the next mainstay in the food complex that we need. Now, when you exercise, I said you, you have to have something to give your body the energy and the capability of using that food in the form of whatever energy it is produced in the, the complex energy molecules called ATP, but you need something to get that ATP into your cells, you need something to help your cells utilize it, and you need something to help your cells cleanse, repair, and overcome oxidative stress. Mm -hmm. And that is the benefit, and that is the beauty of these glyconutrients. They help all these physiological processes that your body goes through. Yeah, it's one thing for somebody who's working out hard or even exercising regularly uh, without working out hard, but I recall that uh, in the 70s and 80s when I was in senior executive positions in the, the corporate world and I was chief of L'Oreal Cosmetics in Australia, for example, there was a lot of stress on, on my work patterns and, and uh, I wasn't working out very much. I wasn't gaining any weight. I was lighter than I am now, but uh, is, is mental stress similar to physical stress and therefore also requires supplementation? Absolutely, John. Monosaccharides and phytonutrients, phytochemicals, phytosterols are absolutely necessary for proper production of neurotransmitters within your body. And if you're under stress of any kind, be it corporate, emotional, physical, you need something to assist your body to make its production of these neurochemicals more efficient and uh, for your cells to communicate and, in a, at a better optimal level. Mm. Yeah, we, we sometimes forget about that, huh? <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, we, we think, you know, just thinking or just being under stress, it doesn't require energy. It requires a lot of energy. Yeah, yeah one of the th interesting things in the world today, of course, in sport uh, is um, is the campaign against the drugs, uh, the drug substances or banned substances, and uh, we didn't have too many of those in my day, I don't think. But it really started in, in, in the late '60s, early '70s with the uh, former former communist bloc countries, and uh, led to some pretty tragic results for some of those people. Well, you know, most weekend warrior athletes, amateur athletes, even some professional athletes think these drugs, these steroids, just pump you up. You know, yes, they will build muscle, they will pump you up. However, the 
terrible side effects can occur almost immediately or can occur many, many years later. Mm. You know, you can have everything from cardiovascular problems, liver tumors, testicular atrophy, impotence in males, uh, increase of your LDL or your lethal cholesterol levels, yeah. uh, you can have decrease of your HDLs, which leads to premature heart attacks. You can have uh, closure and young people particularly, you can have premature closure of your bone growth centers, mm -hmm. which in fact makes you unable to uh, gain your full potential in height yeah. as you grow. Yeah. You can have, in females, you can have all kinds of, as in males. Uh, you can start growing beards as a female. Like well, right? yeah, the, <laughs> I, I was going to say you can have sexual dysfunction, you can have impotence, you can have uh, Feminization in males, uh, masculinization in females. In other words, males will grow breasts and females can grow beards. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm exaggerating a little bit there, but they're terrible. Oh, no, terrible. No, no, there, there are instances of that now. The, 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 the East German swimmers uh, of, of the 70s who have shown those symptoms, it's very tragic, and most of them are female. But, you know, what, what fascinates me is that, that uh, uh, in swimming at least, uh, all the drug records have been broken. They, they were so commonly known. I can remember going to the World Championships in 1990 in Perth, and guys and girls in the teams are openly talking about it's a drug record. No, it's a real record. That's a drug record. That's a real record. But they've all been broken, and and I think it's largely because of the sort of research that you've been doing and, and your colleagues uh, in in nutrition, as well as of course uh, train smarter, not harder. Uh, the, the, the biomechanics and so on has contributed substantially to Im improving efficiency uh, in, in, in sports, particularly that are dealing with a foreign substance like swimming. Um, but uh, it's so encouraging to know that, that modern healthy science can overcome and beat yes. the, the bad stuff. The, the modern science, the science of nutrition has shown that an athlete, an athlete still has to train, he has to get himself emotionally prepared and everything, but with the proper nutrition, we have shown that athletes can actually increase muscle mass, decrease fat cells, increase bone density, all the benefits of steroids without any of the side effects, all the benefits to personal health. And these are all legal side. as far as all the sporting world is concerned? Totally legal. In fact, there, there have been reports of Olympians recently who have achieved almost amazing, unbelievable results, and they have used the uh, science of glyconutritionals and the products produced by this science to enhance their own legal competitive edge. Yeah, it's just so important and so fantastic to see uh, clean athletes uh, breaking world records and using their, their, their other attributes and, uh, and not just physical attributes. I mean, everybody teases Ian Thorpe about his big feet and that's the reason why he's a fast swimmer. You know, Alex Popov can kick as fast as Ian Thorpe can. It's actually Ian Thorpe's mental preparation, his, his brilliant technique in the upper body, uh, which is related to biomechanical research and his, his whole lifestyle is is just attuned to clean, clean, uh, uh, productive performance, and, and not just uh, in in the swimming pool, but also socially. And, and, and he's a great supporter of the of, of the arts and of uh, many charities, particularly to do with kids and, and the kids' well-being. So what you're telling me is a person not. To, to be a great athlete, it's not only the physical, but they are attuned to all the emotional, psychological, societal... And surely nutritional as well. Societal, yeah. yes, and nutritional yeah. aspects to producing a well-rounded, total person. In other words, the more athletic, not necessarily more athletic, but if you are athletic, that helps you increase your own personal mm. well-being, if you will. Yeah. Very much so. I, I, I think I look at it as a tripod, and, and if you only have two sti sticks of the tripod, the main, the main uh, legs of the tripod are sure physical ability, uh, but then uh, equally, if not more importantly, mental application and mental attitude, mental ability, mm -hmm. if you like. And that's not simply being able to con yourself into a performance. And then what I might call environment: family, coach, club, team, friends, and and social environment. And uh, if one of those is missing, you, uh, the world's too competitive these days. You just can't succeed. Oh, I'm glad you shared that because, you know, I haven't known you that long. Just a few days I've been in here in Sydney, and certainly you have embodied all those aspects. And it's been a great pleasure talking to with you, John. Thank you very much for uh, spending listen, the time with and me. And thank you for doing all your good work. Thank you.